Well, good morning, family, and Happy New Year. Oh, it's not New Year on the regular calendar. It's the beginning of a new church calendar. It's the beginning of the liturgical year. In the Christian church, the new year does not begin on January 1st or even on Christmas Day. We begin our year with the season of Advent. We begin by observing a season of waiting and watching for Christ to come. We remember that God promised his people that a Redeemer, a Savior, a Messiah would come. And then in the little town of Bethlehem, Jesus was born. So we begin every year by looking and longing for Jesus to, well, show up. And please understand that Advent is not a countdown to Christmas. It's not four weeks until we open presents. Advent, like its sister season, Lent, is about preparation. And in the season of Lent, we prepare ourselves to go with Jesus to the cross. And in the season of Advent, we tune our hearts and we train our eyes to encounter Jesus when he shows up. And he does show up. He shows up in the most unlikely places and at the most unlikely times and in the most unlikely ways. So welcome to the season of Advent. This year, the gospel writer Luke will be our guide. Let's listen to what Luke tells us that Jesus said in chapter 21. You might want to sit down for this. Are you ready? Hear the word of the Lord. There will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. On the earth, there will be dismay among nations in their confusion over the roaring of the sea and surging waves. The planets and other heavenly bodies will be shaken, causing people to faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world. Then they will see the human one coming on a cloud with power and great splendor. Now when these things begin to happen, stand up straight and raise your heads, because your redemption is near. Jesus told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. When they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see these things happening, you know that God's kingdom is near. I assure you that this generation won't pass away until everything has happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will certainly not pass away. Take care that your hearts aren't dulled by drinking parties, drunkenness, and the anxieties of day-to-day life. Don't let that day fall upon you unexpectedly like a trap. It will come upon everyone who lives on the face of the whole earth. Stay alert at all times, praying that you are strong enough to escape everything that is about to happen and to stand before the human one. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now my hunch is that you are probably expecting early news of Christmas. Am I right? But not today. Today we get people fainting from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world. What's that about? With everything around us pointing to Christmas, you thought you might hear strains of joy to the world. Instead, you get dismay among nations in their confusion over the roaring of the sea and surging waves. And it will get worse. In the coming weeks, we will be called snakes and vipers and the chaff that will be thrown into a raging fire on the last days. What can I say? Welcome to Advent. On the other hand, Advent will get better. We will hear about the birth of a special baby. Then again, all babies are special, aren't they? Soon we'll get to peek into the manger and pull back the swaddling clothes to reveal the face of love. But that's the way of Advent. It's a season of mixed messages. Advent is like a real-life good news, bad news joke. And if we only hear part of the message, we'll miss the point. If we only hear the good news, peace on earth, the Savior is born, we'll miss the wake-up call that warns us of a day of judgment that one day will be upon us all. And if we only hear the bad news, we'll miss the comfort and security that will protect God's people from that final day. So let's take a few minutes to learn about Advent. First, we are in a new liturgical year. The Christian calendar only has three years, A, B, and C. 
And as I said a moment ago, the church year starts today. This is year C. And the season of Advent invites us to open our eyes and our ears, to watch, to wonder, and to ponder what we will see and hear and experience. Which makes sense because the word Advent literally means coming. It comes from the root word for adventure. Just around the corner, something is about to happen. Soon, but not quite yet, we will experience a new thing. When will it come? Well, that's part of the adventure, and that's why we call it Advent. But this theme of coming has three different references, a past, a present, and a future. Something or someone came once, something or someone is coming now, and something or someone will come later. Most of us celebrate the someone who came once. We celebrate the one who came in a manger 2,000 years ago. We decorate our homes, we sing carols in church, we ring bells and give gifts, and we speak of peace, joy, and goodwill as God came to earth in the form of a baby. And because we celebrate it every year, there is little that is adventurous about it, right? We know the map. We know the plan. It's the same every year. But imagine what it was like for the people of Israel who waited for four centuries for the Messiah to arrive. They watched for the signs of his coming. They anticipated what life would be like when he finally arrived. And the few who recognized him at his birth rejoiced greatly. In a similar sense, each year, each Advent, we slowly approach Christmas so that we can appreciate the anticipation of a Savior. But Jesus also comes to us in the present, not in a manger or on a cross, but in countless other ways into the lives of believers through the sacrament of baptism. He is born in them, birthed in their hearts, every bit as realistically as when he was born in a manger. But he also comes to us in the sacrament of Holy Communion when we eat the bread and drink the wine. He says that we ingest him, therefore he goes with us into the mountains and valleys of our daily lives. If we think we're alone in this world and in the problems that we face, Think again. Jesus goes with us always. He did not just come once, he comes in the present. Today's gospel message focuses on the third aspect of his appearing, his arrival, the coming of Jesus in the future on that last day. Scripture is chock full of references of when the world as we know it will come to an end, and Jesus will be there. He will appear when we least expect him, out of the blue. Some people read these verses and are filled with terror. Others hear these words and they are filled with excitement and expectation. The difference lies in the fact that some will be prepared for the coming of Jesus, the Messiah, while others will not. Advent tells us to get ready, to be ready, to live ready. Okay? Get ready. But for what and for when? Jesus said that neither the angels in heaven nor the Son of Man know when his coming will occur. But the message of our gospel reading today is that we should always be ready. We should always be prepared for the final coming of Christ. That's also the message of Advent. You see, there is no clock to tell us when the last day is coming. Being prepared is the best plan and the ultimate goal, knowing that when the time comes, Our faith is in Jesus and in Jesus alone, and that alone saves us. Salvation is not found in having the right answers. Salvation is not found in having financial security. It can't be found in the hours we invested teaching Sunday school or in any mission trips we might have experienced. When the Messiah comes, we must have trusted and continue to trust in Jesus as our Savior. Today's words are not written to scare us but to prepare us for his coming. So as we enter this Advent season, maybe it's a good time to contemplate the personal nature and status of our faith and to thank God for our salvation and to get ready for the coming of Jesus. What do you say? Let the season begin. Let's pray. Good and gentle God, walk with us, we pray, as we journey again and through life and words, prepare the groundwork 
for paths to be made straight and a way prepared for the King of Kings to enter hearts and minds. Father, today we pray for the sick and injured. Give your healing, your wisdom, your protection, we pray. We lift up to you, especially those who are battling COVID-19. We pray, Father, for everyone facing natural disasters. We also pray for those who seek refuge, asylum, and safety. Father, as the holidays approach, we pray for those for whom the holiday season is a dark and difficult time. Bring your comfort, your care, and your love to them today. Father, you've called us to give your love and your healing to those who desperately need it. Help us to value, to love, to comfort and care for those who are the last, the least, the lost, and the left out. And now, using the words debts and debtors, let us pray with boldness the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thanks for joining me today. Was this message helpful to you? If so, will you share this video with three friends this week? Also, if you have a prayer request, please leave it in the comments section and be assured that I will be praying for you and for your need. Your job this week is to love at least three people and make sure at least one of them doesn't deserve it, okay? Because everyone needs love and everyone needs to know that God loves them no matter what. Please don't let all the responsibilities and busyness of life rob you of your joy. With Jesus, we always, always, always have hope. Now receive these words of benediction today. May the Lord bless you and protect you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his face to you and grant you his peace. Amen. Amen.